going through far side armbar from side control. Okay, so you can attack the far arm and you can attack the near arm from side control or once you've passed the guard. I find the far side armbar to be a higher percentage attack, right? Because it's kind of hard to lift this shoulder up and get behind it on the near side. It's a lot easier for them to drop that shoulder. Usually when your opponent's trying to escape, they're facing you, so they tend to lift this shoulder up. Okay, so we get a better chance to get behind this shoulder, even though we've got to step all the way around. Right? So the other thing with this, so basically where we're going with it, we're going to capture the far arm, step over, and finish the arm bar out the other side. Right. So this is probably a great way to introduce yourself to the choy bar style arm bar that we'll be talking about later, because it's different in the way we get to the arm. Okay, Normally, we... You know, from close guard and mount, we're usually climbing up behind the shoulder from lower down. With the far side armbar, we're going over the top to get towards the shoulder, just like we will when we go for choy bar and, and those sections. Okay. So let's get into some of the details. First, I need to get the shoulder up. It's going to be very hard to armbar Ollie if he stays on his, uh, if he manages to keep his left shoulder down, and I can't lift that up. So, to get this up, I want to get an underhook. A very good way to get the underhook is just coming up onto knee on belly for a moment, okay? Because he's going to have to push that knee, okay? As he goes to push the knee, I can get an underhook, right? This is pretty standard sort of thing. He's got his arms tied inside control. Come up, knee over the top. Okay, now I take my underhook here, right? It's really important that I grip onto the shoulder here. Even though you'll probably be tempted to pull, you're trying to pull the, like, the elbow, you think about armbar, you think about the elbow, but it's easy for him to keep his shoulder down here, and it'll be very hard to get the armbar later, okay? So I want to grip right here, cupping onto the shoulder, okay? Now, to get Ollie off the mat here, I need to get this shoulder high. I'm going to need something to post out this side, okay? Because as I start to pull him up, if he just rolls back here, he's going to tilt me back, and I lose that shoulder being up. So by posting my hand up on this side, I've now got a counter pressure, so when he tries to roll back, that post through the hand helps me lift the shoulder up. If we turn a little side on, you'll see I drop my weight back. Okay, so I'm here, I've got my, my underhook, and to kind of get him up, I start to just drop my weight back. Right. So you'll probably find there's a little bit of a fight here to keep the shoulder up, and something that you use here is actually quite counterintuitive, which is called the the up and crush, but having my elbow open makes it hard to, to pull with a lot of strength. I want to lock my elbow by my side, okay? Not only by my side, but I want to lock, like, turn down and put pressure into the ribs, okay? So you get almost like a lever action, where, like, if I push my elbow down, my hand gets levered up over his ribs. Can you see that? Like, elbow goes down, it pulls my hand up, puts more pressure in to lift that shoulder up. Okay, so once we get this up and crush like this, okay, and Ollie tries to roll back, that's going to be much more difficult again, right? So, in summary, usually we put our knee up, I take this underhook, okay, I post, I start to lean backwards, and when I see the opportunity, I put my elbow in front, and I start to put pressure down towards him, levering my hand even further towards me. Obviously, throughout this, I'm going to watch out for Ollie just pummeling his hand in front of my head. Okay, so, for example, if I get the underhook here, he pummels in front of my head. This isn't going to work. I'll slip off the arm. Okay, so I need to put my head next to the arm as I do this, so he can't pummel. I can pull up and lock in. The next thing to do is I'm going to want to step around and start to set up the armbar. Before I do that, I'm going to want to kind of make this process a little bit easier and make sure he doesn't flatten out as I go for it. So one of the first things I actually do is I start to lean my weight through my, my shoulder on top of this arm, okay? It kind of puts even more pressure to lift this, this shoulder up and it makes it hard for Ollie to kind of like flatten out or reuse that arm. If I start going here, he might pummel that arm back, okay? So by, by leaning my shoulder here and putting pressure on the arm, it frees that up, and it also makes my hips light. Now it's actually easy to step, okay? When I'm up with my weight around the shoulder, it's harder to step over the head, okay? So by going this way, 
I'm taking care of a few things and making it easier to step over the head. Just turn a bit. So I'm going to want to step over the head now. Right? So ideally, I step and I go right behind the back here, right? keeping my shin vertical. Imagine if you put like a block behind someone. So if I step close enough, if Ollie goes to roll backwards, he's a little bit stuck. Okay? He can't get the shoulder down. Right? It requires two things. One, I've got my foot blocking. Uh, can you roll this shoulder away? Sorry, uh, this shoulder flat, sorry, yeah. This one goes flat, but I also need my knee leg being tight here, stopping the shoulder roll forward, okay? If this one's loose, and out here, so if we go back, so. If my right leg's loose, just so they can see, right, and I step over, just roll your shoulder forward to, to flatten, you can still go flat, okay? So I need my left leg here, and my right leg pinching against the body, go flat. Now, this has kept him stuck. So, as we go for this arm, I've got my right leg tight, I step and I block Ollie from being able to roll back. Okay. Keeping my feet in position, I'm going to pivot my legs to the other side. So I go on my toes on my right leg and I want to go 180 degrees. Okay. So from here, facing this way, I'm going to now face the other direction, bringing my hips in very, very close to the shoulder. All right. This is now going to allow me to fall back and extend the arm. So looking at where my, uh, my leg goes, because there's some very common mistakes here, right? A lot of people step out here. Of course, he can roll. As I go around, he drops his shoulder. I want to be blocking that by stepping close. Another very common uh, issue is people like try to swing over the top, right? So as I come around, if I, if I try to like step to here, he's got a lot of room to drop the shoulder again. Just focus on jamming in. You can bring your hips quite close if you just focus on your knee jamming in like this. Okay, so your hips need to land, your hips need to land close to the body as you pivot around, right? Once he starts to defend by grabbing his arm, if he, if he does, then I can, he's holding himself in now, I can take my leg out and assume a normal leg configuration. Otherwise, you're fine to try and finish the arm bar with the knee there anyway. So another common error that I see is even if we step over, I see people drop that knee, okay? So if you drop this knee down as you spin around, which might seem uh, intuitive to put this down, it's gonna be really hard to get underneath the shoulder now, okay? I need to, I need to like get right behind this arm, so I need to keep this shin up as I spin around. So you'll run into an issue where your opponent blocks your leg, or they lift their head high. Both of these things make it hard to step over the top. In terms of the head, we can actually just push it. That's fine. So we've got this arm, you know, it can be posting, but occasionally, once you've got them like back enough, you can push as you're about to, to step. That's reasonably easy, okay? The arm's a little more of an issue, okay? There's a couple of things that, that I like to do from here. If you can, like bring your inside knee over. So if it's kind of blocking here, sometimes I can bring my knee inside like this, so up and forward, and then fold over the top. That allows me to do a little windshield wiper, okay? putting my right foot over the top, keeping my knee tight against the body, and then I'm ready to step over the top, uninterrupted by that arm. The other one you can do, sometimes, uh, sometimes I can't go inside, yeah, so he's following me inside with my, my left leg. I can step up on my right and do like I'm doing a little knee cut across the arm, and pin like this. Obviously, I'm a little less tight on the chest here, but when I do this, I've got a chance now at stepping and curling around to go for the armbar. So in summary, uh, to get the underhook, we start coming up towards knee on belly. We take the underhook here and we grip onto the shoulder. We put our head tight so they can't pummel their, their arm back in front. We post, lean back and bring our elbow in front here, getting that up and crush position. Put our shoulder over the top of the arm and start leaning to the side. Okay, this opens up room to start to step over the head. We might have to deal with their, their arm positioning in to do so. Okay, we step, keep our shin vertical, and spin all the way to the side. Try and spin 180 degrees, okay? So, last mistake I see is a lot of people go like to here and sit back. Okay, he's halfway out of an arm bar. Just turn a bit. If I'm like here, he's halfway through his hitchhiker escape. Okay, I wanna spin 
all the way around as far as I can. And if he is trying to hitchhiker, take the wrist this way, okay? Change your grip to the wrist, roll against it. So if he tries to continue, he's blocked, and then I can fold it back straight. If you do happen to land a little bit like on an angle, or you notice they're trying to hitchhiker, you've already got this grip on the arm. Try to just fold it, like put your knee inwards, and take their wrist the other way, okay? Like try to land like this. So when he tries to escape, he's blocked, and then you can come back into the straight arm. The armbar is the most common upper body submission, and while the standard application still exists as a high percentage attack, recent innovations have come about as armbar counters have improved, resulting in a variety of leg configurations and grip breaks related to finishing the arm lock. The standard approach of climbing up the torso to the elbow has also been complemented by a different pathway known as the choi bar, in which you climb over the shoulder to reach the elbow. This adaptation overcomes the defense where your opponent will posture low and hide access to the torso, which will negate the standard armbar setup as they are now exposed to the choi bar setup. Combining this with the other type of straight arm lock, the cutting armbar allows you to chain arm lock attacks with entries from major control positions, close guard, open guard, butterfly guard, and when passing. Spread over 17 chapters, the Straight Arm Lock Anthology details the fundamentals of the armbar through to advanced finishing mechanics and entries.